Was this in guys? So as promised, paper one twenty thirteen. Let me get things started. Um, the expression x minus two is a factor of. So all we have to do here is just plug in x is equal to two. Um, now as per usual, I will be going through the working for each question. The ones that repeat, I'll just give you all the answer. All right. So um i just calculating f of 2 see which one is equal to 0 i know the answer for this one is part a because this is a repeat question so just to um confirm 4 into 2 squared minus 2 sorry 2 3 4 4 minus 2 into 2 squared minus 56 is 0 um just a recap how did I get f of 2? All I have to do is put the factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So if x minus 2 is equal to 0, x is equal to 2, and that will be the, um, the number I'm substituting for x. If the factor was x plus 16, I put x plus 16 equal to 0, x is minus 16, and I put minus 16 equal to x. If I get 0 as my value and I substitute x, then the factor is a factor. Um, this is another repeat, but I still like to go through it because they can mix it up a little bit. Plus 3C minus 3B minus AC. So I'll group things together. I'll group the AB and the minus 3B together. And I'll group the minus AC and the 3C together. Um, in these, I know it's a factorization by grouping, but when you're rearranging, you just had to be a little smart when you're rearranging. I'll put the bigger numerical number after my first term in the first pair. So I have AB and then I have the minus 3 whatever. For the second pair, I have the minus 3 whatever as my second term. Or in this case, it's plus 3 whatever. Um, so it's just take a little bit of practice. A minus 3 minus C into A minus. So a minus 3 into b minus c. a minus 3 into b minus c. I think this is one as a repeat as well. Um, given that x plus 2 is a factor, so similar to number 1, I'll put x plus 2 is equal to 0, and I'll get x is equal to minus 2. Now, given that it is a factor, given that it is a factor of f of x, then I'll substitute minus 2 and put it equal to 0. Because if it's a factor, it's equal to 0. So here we have x plus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to minus 2. And I'm substituting it into this expression here. 2 into minus 2 cubed minus 3 into minus 2 squared minus 5 into minus 2 plus p. And that will be equal to 0 given that this is a factor. So this is <clears throat> 2 minus 2 cubed is minus 8. Minus 8 by 2 is minus 16. Uh, minus 2 squared is 4. 4 by 3 is 12. Be minus 12 plus 10 plus p is equal to 0. Minus 16 minus 12 is minus uh, that looks like 28. Plus 10 is minus 18. So minus 18 plus p is 0. p is equal to positive 18. That factorizes completely as okay now in this question if you're comfortable factorizing go ahead and factorize it this is a, um, a polynomial of degree three if you're comfortable factorizing go ahead and factorize um if you're not comfortable factorizing we can just go in each of the options we have now generally it has something called synthetic division. And the synthetic division says, if I have brackets, right? And the brackets are multiplied by each other. The first term in my first bracket, by the first term in my second bracket, by the first term in my third bracket, by the first term in my fourth, first term in my fifth bracket, and so on, will always give me the first term in my answer. So, as seen here, I have, for, for example, this is my first term multiplied by my first term, multiplied by my first term, supposed to give me my first term. 
the last term multiply by the last term multiply by the last term supposed to give me the last term so we can kind of gauge this question in that perspective to see which of these options are going to give me 2x cubed as my first term and minus 6 as my last term now if cx is smart each of the options go in and give us 2x cubed and minus 6 then we'll have to try and figure out how am i going to figure out which one is the answer so let me check and see x by x is x squared by 2x is 2x cubed okay so a could be a potential answer 2 by minus 1 by minus 3 is going to give me a plus 6 so a cannot be our answer try the second bracket x by x by 2x is still going to give me 2x cubed now i'm going to check and see if this will give me minus 6 as my last term minus 2 by minus 1 is positive 2 positive 2 by positive 3 is positive 6 so brother man b is also not an answer next bracket x by x by 2x again they're going to give me the 2x cubed minus 2 by 1 by minus 3 is going to give me a positive 6 again so brother man c cannot be the answer i'm going to check the last option x by x by 2x is 2x cubed and to see if this gives me minus 6 just to double check minus 2 by 1 by 3 is minus 6 so the answer here is going to be d the roots of the equation are so using the discriminant b squared minus 4ac let's check and see what that is b squared minus 4ac this is 36 this is going to be a positive number um which is going to be plus 20 by 2 is 40 this is definitely greater than zero so the roots are real and distinct distinct is another word to say different number six the range of values for that is go back in one of the previous papers we did the shortcut to um to figure out these types of solutions i know homeboy is going to be a curve like this I want to know where it is less than zero so here is these pieces where it will be less than zero so i know this will be a union of two separate um range of values now i'm going to try to solve the quadratic and see what are the two roots and we solve the quadratics easy easy on the calculator if you could um a is one minus seven is b and ten is c so five and two are my roots so this is going to be 5 and this is going to be 2. So my solutions are all these values here before 2 and all the values here after 5. <clears throat> so x is less than 2 and x is greater than 5. Bam bam, Bob's your uncle, sees your answer. All right, so um, now this one here, it is not a poly, um, it's not a quadratic. So we are had to go and fight up the draw no curve it's just a simple solve for this one here so we have 3x plus 2 is greater than x minus 2 3x minus x is greater than minus 2 minus 2 um 2x is greater than minus 4 and x is greater than minus 2 x is greater than minus 2 d is the answer now you might be tempted to say, well, you know, this is a minus, so the sign have to change. No. Just remember, we only change the nature of this inequality sign if we are dividing or multiplying by a negative number. I am dividing by positive 2 to solve for x. If this was a negative here, only then will this sign change. Um f of x is that and g of x is that this is a repeat question i think this answer was b but let's double check and see um f of x is 3x minus 4 and they say that out f g of x is equal to x so i'm gonna let this be y so this becomes f of y is equal to x i can figure out what f of y is on this side here which is 3y minus 4 and that was equal to x so I just solve for y, y will give me what g of x is. So move the 4 across, 
3y is equal to x plus 4, and then divide by 3 to get y. So x plus 4 over 3 is y. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number 9, which of the following is a function? Um, a graph is a function if it satisfies the vertical line test and it cuts at only one point. Um, A. A function H. This is another repeat question. I think this was 5A or 10A plus 17. All right, so let's still do it over. So H of X is 5X plus 2 and H of 2A plus 3 will be 5 into 2a plus 3 plus 2, 10a plus 15 plus 2, 10a plus 17. See the answer. A function is defined by that. The value of f inverse of 1 is, um, all right, so let me take a little two minutes and do a little explanation, probably for a shortcut in questions like this. So one way is just simple, calculate f inverse of x, then calculate f inverse of 1. So let's do that one first. So I'll let y equal 2 over x minus 3, interchange x and y, x is equal to 2 over y minus 3, then I'll solve for y. x into y minus 3 is equal to 2, xy minus 3x is equal to 2, xy is 2 plus 3x and y is 2 plus 3x over x this is f inverse of x is this and we want to know what f inverse of 1 is so i'll just substitute 1 in this equation so that will be 2 plus 3 over 1 and i get 5 that's my answer now that is indeed one way to do it another way to do it is to understand your how a function behaves in terms of the mapping that we have, right? So from here to here is indeed f of x. From here back to here is f inverse of x. So the question says that our f of x is some value, right? And the value of f inverse of, of 1 will be there. So for some value, let me call the value a, when I plug in a into f of x, I'm going to get 1 as my answer. When I plug in 1 into f inverse of x, I'm going to get back a as my answer. Um, thinking about it, it we could just look at the first, first, first method I, I just not sure. Right? Um, this one here, I overthink it a little bit. This approach will apply if they give me a value for f of x or for f of um, f inverse of 1 or they give me some value in the question. They didn't give me no value in the, in the question, so just ignore that approach. Um, I think they simplify to be a quarter. You could always do it on your calculator. 2 to the power, wait in brackets, 2 to the power minus 1 divided by 8 to the power a third, put in brackets, 8 to the power 1 over 3, close brackets, push ups. Plug that into the quadratic formula. Alright, 2 to the power minus 1 divided by 8 to the power of 1 over 3, close bracket, 0.25, which is a quarter. That can be expressed as, um, we can take a similar approach to um, actually, no, don't take the approach because this could be simplified. Just calculate it on a calculator and see what we get. Um, 8 plus root 5, close bracket, open bracket, 2 minus root 5, close bracket. Negative, there's a repeat question, eh? Negative 2.146. 11 minus 6 root 5. Negative 2.146. Easy answer. Now check the whole, check the whole, all the numbers in this question, eh? all the numbers, up till down here, up till the 7865, because sometimes you could bring each of the options very, very close to my original value. So let's check all.
the value of x for which 4 to the power x plus 1 is equal to 2, 4 to the power x plus 1 is equal to 2, um, 4 is 2 squared, to the power x plus 1. Well, when we have a base raised to multiple powers, I must multiply the powers. It's 2 to the 1, equate the powers. Um, 2x plus 2 is equal to 1, 2x is 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2, x is 1 minus 2 is minus 1, over 2, minus a half, is your answer. Or you could just plug in minus a half as x, 0 as x, a half as x, and 1 as x, and see which one of those give me 2 as my answer. Given that log of x to base p is 6, and log of y to base p is 4, the value of log of x over y to base p is um in this one here and i think this one was equal to two i think um if you have a good good enough calculator you could probably do this question all right the bases are the same so you could put literally any base any base you want to put all right or we remember the laws of logs the laws of logs says that log of m i will use x to base p minus log over log minus log of y to base p is equal to log of x over y to base p and it will work both ways so i have log of x over y to base p here so that's equivalent to this on this side here i have log of x to base p which is six Log of y to base p, which is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2. Answer is 2. Given that a and b are the roots of the equation, what is the value of a plus b all squared? This is your alpha beta roots. Um, you could probably, one way you could do it, solve the quadratic. Right? Let me do the, I'll say the easier way first. Because it's multiple choice, and I mean, Alea Hano really need to learn alpha beta roots if, unless they're doing pure. Let me solve the quadratic. A is 1, 3, and 4. So negative. Ah. Ah. Okay. So this um, equation yields imaginary roots. How do I know it's imaginary roots? On a calculator, you see this xy on top here? That xy is an indication that this x2 is an imaginary number. And this x1 is also an imaginary number. So I cannot calculate the solutions to this quadratic, which is smart, I'll say, on CSEC behalf. Good job, CSEC. Um, so we have to go and use the approach for the alpha beta roots. So x squared plus 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. A is 1. B is 3 and C is 4. Alpha plus beta is equal to minus B over A, which is minus 3. And alpha beta is C over A, which is 4. Um, now, i just going to make the transition and say that is alpha plus beta squared, okay? And there is a law you all will need to learn. Alpha plus beta squared. Um, is equal to alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. I have, actually, I have alpha plus beta. It's just a squared. Minus 3 squared is 9. Bam shot. Okay. Huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're good to go better. The common ratio for the geometric progression is, they say it's a GP, so all I had to do is 12 divided by 8. If, you, if, you, if you're a little shy, 12 over 8. Palm shot, 3 over 2. 3 over 2, 3 over 2, 3 over 2. See. Um, the sum of the odd integers between 10 and 50 is, this one is 600. I just double checking to make sure that this was a repeat question. Yes, it was. Okay, so go back in the 2012 paper and you'll see this working for this one here, right? So this one was 600. Um, for the AP, 
the nth term is given by so our ap t sub n is equal to a plus n minus 1 by d um a is 12 so t sub n is equal to minus 12 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d so d in this case looking like I'll use this one here. 8 minus 3 is 5. Expand this here. Minus 12 plus 5n. Minus 5. Yeah. So minus 12 minus 5 looking like minus 17. So 5n minus 17 go be t sub n. 5n minus 17. All right. Number 20 is also a repeat question. I'll just check back. I think this was the specimen paper. Was it? No, this was a repeat question from last year then. Yeah, this was a repeat question from last year. So you see how the rel repeat from 2012 to 2013? They repeat plenty questions, eh? Look, this, this number 16 was a repeat. Um, number 10 was a repeat. Number 13 was a repeat. Number 8 was a repeat. Number one was a repeat. Number two was a repeat as well. So yeah, the repeat plenty in 2013. No idea why. Yeah, so for number 20, for number 20, the working is here. Same number 20 from before. So go back in the previous video and watch it. The lines 7x, I think this is another repeat, you know. 7x minus 4y plus 25. 7x minus 4y plus 25. And... 3x minus y minus 5, 3x minus y minus 5 in the second point. So go back in your working and you'll see 922 is your solution. I think this was a repeat again. Here it was. K2 and 6, 8. K2 and 6, 8 is parallel to the line with equation 3x is parallel to the line with equation 3x minus 3x plus y minus 21 3x plus y minus 21 the value of k is the value of k was 8 hmm. um the points of intersection of the circle i think this is an next repeat question as well boy this page number 29 no, it wasn't a repeat this one wasn't a repeat all right cool so we, we finally come up across a, a question that is not a repeat the points of intersection of the line with the equation x x plus y is equal to 7 and the circle x squared plus y squared is 25 are at a and b the coordinates of A and B respectively are. Now, one thing you can do is substitute each point in both equations. Make sure you get 7 when you substitute here. And make sure you get 25 when you substitute it here. So, I'm going to check the first equation here. I've seen 4s and 3s in all of my answers. So, I know the only way I'm going to get 7 in my first equation is if I have plus 4 and plus 3 as my x and y. So I check in here. 4 and 3 as my x and y. 4 and 3 as my x and y. So D actually satisfies the first equation one time. This plus this is going to give me minus 7, minus 7, um, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. So brother man, I know one time the answer is D. So just one check I make for this here. Right? Remember the values of the coordinates must satisfy both equations. Um, a unit vector parallel to this is given by, so the unit vector, we could, call, we could just call it u hat, is the modulus, is u over the size of u. So for this vector, it could be 5i plus 12j, which is the vector, over the size of the vector, and the size of this vector will be 13. And you can see it here, 
the size of the vector is square the i and plus the 3 square of the next number, a 25 plus 144, 169, which is 13. So all over 13. Or another way to write this is 1 over 13 into 5i plus 12g. Answer is C. If theta is between pi and 2 pi, and 2 cos theta is equal to root 3, then theta is, all right, um, we could substitute each of these values here. Now, this is going to be within the range. This is going to be within the range. Within the range, and all of them is going to be within the range. So all of these are viable answers. If 2 cos theta is root 3. Or we can say, you know what? If 2 cos theta is root 3, cosine theta is root 3 over 2. And I can work out what theta is. And I'm working it out in degrees. For the man, I leave in it in degrees. And I go in and work out what theta is. Theta is cos inverse of root 3 on 2. Cos inverse of root 3 on 2. Hmm? All right, root 3 divided by 2. And cos inverse of that, 30 degrees. Now, I'm going to translate this into degrees. Pi is 180. And 2 pi is 360. So the answer must be between 180 and 360. So cosine is positive. So cosine is positive in the first quadrant and the last quadrant. In the last quadrant, theta will be 360 minus 30, which is 330 degrees. And I'm going to change this to radians by multiplying by pi over 180. And this becomes 330 over 180. And I'm changing it to improper fraction. And that's 11 pi on 6. E. Um, two position vectors relative to on origin at that and that respectively. The acute angle AOB is given by... Well, we know that how you can learn this formula. Formula cos theta is equal to a dot b over mod a mod b. So theta will be cos inverse of this here. So a dot b, we dot in the i's. That will be 3 to the 6. And we add in it to the product of the j's plus negative 5. So that could be 1. So which one gives me 1 as my numerator? Well, better than one, only the first one here. So we don't have to do no more working. Cosine x is 3 fifths. The value of sine 2x is. So, thinking about a couple ways to do this off the bat. Actually, draw your triangle. Calculate what sine x is. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. Draw a triangle. This is x. Cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse. So, this could be 4 because there's a Pythagorean triplet. You're supposed to be familiar with these things by now. Sine of x is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now, sine 2x is not this multiplied by 2, fellas, to get 2 fifths. And, um, no, 8 over 5, sorry. I am very disappointed there is no 8 over 5 in the answers here. Very, very disappointed. Bad on CSEC. I would have put 8 over 5 to give all the default impression or they're going on the correct path. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x, which is 2 into 4 fifths into 3 fifths. 4 twos are 8, 8 threes are 24 over 25. D is the answer. Um, item 28 refers to the protractor, which represents half of a circle. Okay. The protractor has a radius of 1.5 meters and angle AOB is 45 degrees. Okay, cool. What is the arc length X? So arc length is R theta, which is 1.5 and theta must be in radians. So 45 degrees multiplied by pi over 180 is going to give me the radian equivalent. 45 over 180, I think like 12. A quarter? Pi on four? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Pi on four. So 1.5 by 
pi on 4 and okay 1.5 by pi on 4 1.5 divided by 4 change it uh by 3 over 8 so that will be 3 8 pi or 3 pi on 8 y is equal to sine x um y is equal to sine x starts at the origin and finishes at 2 pi starts at the origin so it's going to be d this could be 2 pi here although they didn't put it and the last one ah this question was a kind of a out of the question right um sine x plus 20 degrees is cosine of x now this is of the sign form sine of a plus b right sine of a plus b and the i, find, I figure the easiest way to do a question like this substitute the values of x and see which ones will give you equality um an easy way to do that i have sine of x plus 20 degrees and x could be any of these four options it's cosine of x so if you're lost go to trial and error so regular maths will tell me that this is correct minus cosine of x supposed to be zero regular mathematics tells me that this is this is correct so all I have to do now, substitute 35, see if I get zero. Well, there we go. I substitute in 35 here. Degrees, sine, this could be 35 plus 20 is 55. Put in brackets. Sine of 55, take away cosine of 35. One time function. You can check B as well. Sine of this option B tells me X is 45, so this becomes 65 minus cosine of 45. Like that. Now, let me try and this is one way to do it, right? I might have a harder way to do it where we expand this using the compound angle formula. So let me try a thing, right? Take, take some time and try it. This could be sine A cos B plus cos a sine b and i see no way to do this question none none whatsoever because they did not give me a value for this no this they didn't um actually if i all right i've seen something here right this is equal to some value some value um let me call that value a. Right, this is equal to a. Actually, they say this is equal to cosine of x. Yeah, they said that this here is equal to cosine of x. So let me look at that. Let me rearrange, right? I'm going on leave this on this side. Um bring the cosine x and send the minus sine x cosine 20 on the next side so i get cosine x into sine 20 minus 1 is minus sine x cosine 20 i still don't know what x is so brother man shot um this was a repeat question this was one on root 2 sine alpha plus cos alpha if we go back here, definitely was a repeat. Sine of alpha plus 45. Sine of alpha plus 45. For 4 pi on 5 radians, that is 4 pi over 5 multiplied by 180 over pi. Because you want the pi's to cancel out to get an answer in degrees only. So we have 4 over 5 by 180. 4 over 5 by 140 degrees. B. Bob is your uncle, B is your answer. Um, sine theta is 5 on 13, theta is obtuse, then tan theta is, this is a repeat, but this is an easy question to do. Um, theta, sine theta is opposite, 
over hypotenuse. There's another Pythagorean triplet. And this could be 12. Theta is obtuse. Important to know. It lies in the third quadrant. I'm um, sorry. Second quadrant. So tan is going to be negative. So it's going to be either this or this. So tan theta is um, O hell another hour of arithmetic. Opposite over adjacent. 5 over 12. And because it's obtuse in the second quadrant, minus 5 on 12. Um, this was a repeat question. I don't know if it was from 2012 or 2011. Let's check and see. Sine x over 1 minus cos x. Sine x over 1 minus cos x plus sine x over 1 plus cos x. Sine x over 1 plus cos x. And the answer was C. 2 over sine x. C. 2 over sine x. You see how much questions repeating from 2012 to 2013. When we do 2014, we'll see how much repeat from 2014, from 13 to 14, then 14 to 15, and so on. Um, if that is that, then dy dx is, so this, have some more room here. So this is going to be 1 plus x cubed, 1 plus x cubed to the power of 1 third. I can use the chain rule, the shortcut to the chain rule, multiply by the power, 1 plus x cubed. Take away 1 from the power, I get minus 2 thirds, and I'm multiplying by the differential of the brackets, which is going to be 2x. So I get 2x on the, on the numerator over 3. This power becomes positive when I send it below. It could be the cube root of 1 plus x cubed to the power 2. Go back and watch one of the long, one of the lives. I did differentiation. I think it was the first live when reviewing. I did differentiation. Make a lot of sense out of this if you don't understand it. So the answer is going to be none of them. Why did I put 2x as the differential, brother man? 3x squared. Yeah. Alright, so this is going to be 3x squared over that. The 3 could cancel with this 3. And I get x squared over the cube root. A third minus one is minus two thirds. Yeah, it's going to be the cube root of one plus x cubed. Hmm? Oh, half. Minus a half. What was, what was going on with me there, boy? I, I had a moment, guys. Right, allow me. I'm allowed to have a moment. So it could be the square root of 1 plus 3. So x squared on top. x squared on top. 2 root 1 plus 3. So the square root of 1. Oh, one. I had a little senior moment there, fellas. Allow me. Um, the gradient at that to the curve that calculate dy dx. This cosine x. And cosine of pi on 6, pi on 6 I think is 30 degrees, and cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 on 2. Yeah, D. Double check. Cosine of pi on 6 is 0.999, tra -la -la -la. root 3 divided by 2. Mm -hmm. Oh, shocks. I forget to change it in, in um, from degrees to radians. I mean that's small thing. Cosine of pi on six is thirty degrees. Point eight six 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 six, which is D. Now again, some calculators actually give this value in third format. Unfortunately, this one doesn't. But this is still a good calculator. The equation of a curve is given by that. The gradient function, bacanal. It has no bricks in this one. Right, we had to go and differentiate everything. But you'd rather write no statements. U is x squared plus 2. And V is x minus 1 cubed. DU dx is 2x. DV dx is 3 into x minus 1 squared multiplied by 1. You don't have to go and show any, any more working after that. DY dx is V du dx 
plus u dv dx. I said factorization time. Now I see that x plus x minus one on x minus one here. So the lower power is x minus one squared into x x minus one into two x plus three into x squared plus. I think this looking like a repeat question, you know. So x minus one squared. So it could be any of these here, and I'm gonna work out the bracket, right? So here I'm going to get two x squared minus 2x plus 3x squared plus so I get 3x squared plus 2x squared is 5x squared minus 2x plus 6 5x squared minus 2x plus 6 C is the answer I think 27 is a repeat question or no? yes it is it definitely is Number 38, let's see. Nah, 38 is not a repeat. Um, if that is that, then dy dx is. All right, so again, <clears throat> we don't have to write no formulas. U is x squared. Du dx is 2x. V is x plus 3. Dv dx is 1. This is an easy one to um, execute. V du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. I don't have to calculate v squared because in the answer, all the v squares are the same thing. So I just focus on my numerator. So I'm not going to put my denominator here just to work it out. So I get x cubed plus 3x squared minus x squared and I get x cubed plus 2x squared on top and v the udx or oh, the udx is 2x right why am I making so much mistakes though I'm probably a little tired um minus v du dx so i get 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 3 so i get 2x squared minus so plus 5x minus 3 Square. This can be factorized. I make a mistake somewhere. U is x squared, du dx is 2x. V is x plus 3, dv dx is 1. V du dx minus u minus u dv dx. Alright, so that there. Yeah minus x squared so here we get x squared plus 6x which is x into x plus 6 d low man me and all going on low man all right it is what 40 only 43 minutes into the video um the curve c is given by this the second this is a um a repeat question as well i distinctly remember this question um it was 2011 no no it's right here right the 2y dx squared x squared plus 16 on x x squared plus 16 on x and on the second derivative yep answer is b so 2 plus 32 over x cubed 2 plus 32 over x cubed b all right now if i was here i would i would not just copy it whole like this i would mix up the options at least at least mix up the options Next repeat question, number 40 is a repeat question. Um, I think, good lord. Look, 40 repeat again in 2014. All right. Um, I think it was 5. It was 5. Um, A0, x squared minus 5, 
a zero x squared minus five is equal to fifty over three, fifty over three. So we anticipate and I repeat in, in um, paper 2014 as well. Um, the region bounded by the curve y is equal to x squared. Oh man, not a repeat. Alright. The region bounded by the curve y is equal to x squared. The x axis, the lines x is equal to 0 and 1, is rotated 360 about the x axis. So when you rotate in 360, it's going to be pi y squared dx which is pi, the integral of y squared dx. y is x squared, so y squared will be x to the power 4. Integral of x to the power 4 dx between 1 and 0. And they didn't want us to work it out, they just wanted us what, to figure out what the expression was. It's not going to be this, not going to be this, because it needs to have a pi in the formula. Um, it's not going to be this, because it's y squared is not x squared. It's going to be d. Easy peasy. Um, 2x minus 5 cubed. Now we can do a shortcut to the, this is a chain rule, but instead of multiplying by the differential of the brackets, we divide by the differential of the brackets. So you just had to be a custom with it. Cube. I will integrate as normal. 2x minus 5 to the power 4 over 4. And I will divide by the differential of the brackets and the, the differential of the brackets will just go on the denominator um this will be two. so i'm looking for eight on the denominator which will either be this or this and i look for the power four now which is going to be c y is equal to 3x squared plus cos x the integral of y going to be the integral of 3x squared plus cosine x I like to write this just to be on the safe side. If y is sine x, dy dx is going to be cosine x. So when I integrate cosine, I'll get back sine. So when I integrate this here, I'll get 3x cubed over 3 plus sine x plus c. You cancel with you. x cubed plus sine x plus c. x cubed plus sine x plus c. B is the answer. Um, integral of sine x plus 2 cos x, this is a repeat. Integral of sine x plus 2 cos x, sine x minus cos x plus c, sine x minus cos x plus c. I mean, they could at least bring the questions mixed up in the answers. Now. Let me see the last one as a repeat. Nah, it's not a repeat. It's a repeat from this. Is it a repeat from 2011? Nah, it's not. Alright, so let's look it out. The region R enclosed by the x-axis, the curve that, the lines that and that. Okay, so they actually want us to calculate that value. So this is going to be the integral between 1 and 0 of minus x squared plus 2 dx. So this could be minus x cubed over 3 plus 2x evaluated between 1 and 0. So that will be minus, be careful. It have a couple ways you can approach this one here. It might make a difference in this particular question, but in future questions it will. This is minus x cubed. All right? I am replacing x. x is 1. So it becomes minus, open bracket, 1 cubed over 3, plus 2 into 1. Minus, when I plug in 0 in... This here, I'll get zero. I'll put minus zero. So this becomes minus a third plus two. And so there, boy, this is two minus a third, which is one on a third, which is five on three. B. If you're a little questionable, minus one over three plus two, one on two thirds is five on three. All right, so that's it for this video. Look out for 2014. I'll upload it a little later on during today. All right. Um, tomorrow, I'll put up an X2. Tomorrow is one Monday. Tomorrow, I might put up three, you know. And Tuesday, I'll probably do a live and finish off. All right. So leave a like, leave a comment, share this video with all your friends, all your family, your neighbor, your cousin, everybody. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.